Hi there, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number five for chapter eight, and the topic is Fourier series. In this video, we will review a method for computing integration by parts in a more efficient way, and this is called the tabular method. And this will be very useful when we want to compute the Fourier coefficients. We have taken a few examples of finding the Fourier series of some given function, and we see that the main part of the work is to carry out the integral. And uh, here, if we see that the function f of x is some kind of a polynomial, then we will end up computing integrals of the form that is polynomial times sine and polynomial times cosine. And these are not so easily um, computed, and uh, a general standard kind of algorithm to work it out is to do integration by parts, and possibly multiple times, depending on the polynomial you have. And it would be rather time consuming. OK, then um, the tabular method would make this computation a little bit easier if you master that method. OK, so let's begin with a, a quick review of integration by parts. Let's say we have two functions, f and g, and we want to compute the integral of f times g prime. Then this equal to the f times g, the non-differentiated function, minus the integral of f prime times g. So note that the prime here is moved from g to f on the right hand, on the right hand side. And there's a minus sign, OK, which will introduce to a sign changing in our tabular form. And then the function um, itself outside the integral over here. OK. Now let's um, manipulate this expression a little bit, writing it in another way, because um, we often facing the integration of the product of two functions. So we call those two functions u and v. These are two functions. And then we call a function capital V to be the antiderivative of v. That means um, capital V prime equals little v. OK, with this notation, the integration by parts can be rewritten as the follows. So integral of u times little v is just the integral of u times capital V prime. And then using f is little u, g is capital V. Then we have u times capital V minus the integral of u prime times capital V. OK, it's exactly this one, the right hand side here. And then we call f u and we call g capital V. OK, now we can put these functions in a tabular form as follows. The first row of the tabular form will be the two functions, u and v. And it's u times v integral is what we want to compute. And then under u, we'll write u prime. And under v, we write capital V, which is the antiderivative of little v. Okay. And then um, on, on the final column outside here, under here, we write the product of the diagonal one, the u times capital V, and we write it here. And then we see that um, the expression above is kind of expressed in this table. So this table, we can read that the integral of the product of these two functions, u and little v, will equal to um, u times capital V, that is what's on the um, right hand side here, minus the integral of the product of these um, two um, these two functions in the second row. OK, so this is the first step. This is um, taking one step of integration by parts. And then we see that um, 
this one here, this integration, we can um, perform integration by part one more time and add more rows in the table. Okay, so we're going to iterate the process one more time and we need some um, notation. Let's say um, v hat is the antiderivative of v. Okay, so integral of capital V is a capital V hat. So capital V hat prime is capital V. Then um, the integral of u prime capital V, that is the right hand side of the previous integration by part. And this one we can do integration by part one more time. And then we will get u prime v hat, the antiderivative minus, so remember it's always a minus sign, okay, and then we have u double prime, you differentiate this one more time, and then times v hat. Okay, and then putting this result in the previous um, integration by parts, now we did two levels of integration by part, then this integral will equal to the product of these two functions minus u prime v hat and that is because this function appears with a, a minus sign in, in in the right hand side of this okay so minus of this and then this term minus times minus becomes um, plus of uh, this term okay so we can represent this in a tabular form um, as follows um, we add one more row in our table and the first column here we will be differentiating this function one more time we get u double prime and for the second column we'll be finding antiderivatives the integrals of this which is uh, some function we call it v hat okay and then we add one more diagonal product u prime times v hat which is here, and then this will carry a negative sign, see, because it's a negative sign here. And that is because you keep having a negative sign and each time you have to change your sign, okay? And then using this table, one can write out this um, integral um, formula, that is the integral of u times v will be uh, the function on the right-hand side from here, we collect here, and this function from the, on the right hand side is collected here. And then this will change. Earlier it was minus, and now we change this sign into plus, and then we compute the integral of product of these two functions. Okay? And then you see that you can carry on one more round to compute the, this integral by integration by part, and you, add up, you will end up adding another row here. Okay, so um, f in order for this method to work, the iteration needs to end. And when will this end? Well, um, it will end in two situations. The first one is some derivatives of u become zero. Then um, the integral term on the right hand side becomes zero, and then you don't have any more integral on the right hand side, and you are done. And the second one will be um, the process repeats itself. That is, um, you end up having a integral on the right hand side that you need to compute, which um, is the same or scalar multiples of the same of what you started. Okay, so in general, um, we know that if you have a polynomial, of degree n and you differentiate it n plus one times then you get zero so if one of the function is a polynomial and you can put that function to be u and if the other one is easily integrated then after certain um, rounds of iteration this u derivative will be zero and then the integration by part tabular form will terminate so for this method to work well, um, the other function, you should be able to find the integrals very easily. So good examples will be the exponential function and the sine function and cosine function. Yeah, so 
as we have said, after differentiating that polynomial several times, we get zero. Okay, and then um, for the second situation where the process repeats itself, and, and then we see that a typical example for such will be um, some function that if you differentiate it again and again, it um, remains itself or it repeats itself in a periodical way. So typical examples will be exponential and sine cosine. So this will be useful in the computation of exponential times sine and exponential times cosine in, the, in connection to computing Fourier coefficients. Okay, let's take an example to see this um, algorithm in action. Let's consider the integration of the function x to the cube times cosine nx. Okay, so um, we see that this is the polynomial one, so we call that our function u, and then the cosine nx is our function v. Okay, so we can begin with these two functions u and v, and we can set up a table, and uh, column A will put u and uh, the derivatives of u until it becomes zero, then you stop, and then in column B we'll p put in the um, antiderivatives of v. Okay, so let's look at the table we get here, column A and column B. So the first row of the column is the function um, u, and that's the function v. And then let's look at the first um, column. So we'll have x cubed. We differentiated once, we get 3x squared. And then we differentiate this once, we get 6x. And differentiate one more time, we get constant 6. And then we know the next one will be 0. Okay, then you stop. And now let's look at the column B. So cosine nx, we integrate, find the antiderivatives, is 1 over n sine nx, and then integrate that one more time, we get negative 1 over n square, you get another factor of 1 over n, and then it changes into cosine. And differentiate this one more time, you get, uh, integrate this one more time, you get sine, and you pick up another n, and then integrate one more time, you get cosine, you pick up an n, and you change the sign. And you don't need to do more because now this is already zero. So this means we can collect the diagonal product terms and, uh, and then the, um, the integral term um, will be zero times something, which is zero. So the process, the iteration stops here. Okay, now take the product of the first entry of column A and the second entry of column B, and then the second entry of column A and the third entry of column B in this diagonal way until you complete. But then these are not the final um, product you would get in your function. You know that the signs need to be considered. So these products will then be multiplied with alternating signs. Okay, so um, let's go back to the table we have set up and add one more column. This will be the column with the, all the product terms with the correct sign. Okay, so you take this product and put it here, and take this product, put it here, and then take this product, put it here, and then take this product and put it here. And then you adjust the sign. This is positive. You actually don't need to do anything. I just put it here to indicate what we were doing. And then you have a negative sign, a positive sign, and a negative sign. Okay? And then you know the next step will be um, collect all these terms on the right-hand side because this will be the the final integral. Okay, collecting all those terms, we get the integral of uh, x cubed cosine nx equals the collection of these four terms. So here I simply copy them down without touching it. 
Okay, so we can um, write them out um, um, in a more compact way. So sine nx will get x cubed over n. This negative negative become positive and we can write it more compactly. And then here positive negative becomes negative and here is negative and is negative. Okay, and you collect all the terms and uh, um, these are all polynomials of this is of decreasing power and then multiply by sine and cosine and with the uh, and plus minus sign accordingly okay so let's now take another example where um the integration by parts would repeat itself in the tabular form after a few steps the classic example is the exponential function times sine and cosine. So let's consider ex times sine x. So here you actually have a choice. You can um, use, um, you can call this function u and this function v, or you can do the other way around because here both functions are very easy to differentiate and to integrate. So it's fine so let's just try both and see if they lead to the same answer okay so the first method u is the exponential v is the sine we can set up the table and then for the u we will differentiate then we just get ex it doesn't give us anything else and then um, for the v we compute the integrals of sine which give us negative cosine and you integrate the cosine and you get sine and you carry the negative sine and now we see that we started with finding the integral product of ex sine x and we end up with the ex times negative sine x on the right hand side so this repeats the original integral so we can stop here and uh, the third column will be the um, diagonal um, multiplication terms. So ex times negative cosine x, we get it here. And the next term is ex times negative sine x, which will enter here. But then that term will need to be multiplied by negative 1, so we get plus. Okay, so now we have all the terms and we can... Um, write out what this tabular form is saying okay expressing this tabular form so the integral of the first row product here would equal to first collecting all the terms here on the right hand side the first term is here and the second term ends up here and then that shall equal to the integral of these two functions okay so the integral function that you collect actually also have a changed sign. So it starts with a negative sign and positive sign and negative and positive if it keeps going on. Okay, So this will be have a positive sign, but this has a negative in front of sign. So you actually in the end get a negative of this. And we see that this integral is the same as the left hand side. We could move this to the left hand side and get a two times it in the front. Okay, then one can um, do that and then divide both sides by 2 and we get this expression. Okay, so here I also take out e of x outside and then put the sign here, negative cosine here. So it's a bit more compact. Okay, so now let's repeat the process um, using... The other way around, let's call this u and this function v. We expect the same result, but let's just verify that. Okay, so here is the table we set up. So the first column will be u and the derivatives. So u is sine x, derivative cosine, derivative one more time, negative sine. And the v is ex, and integrated is always ex. Okay, and the third column will be the um, diagonally collected terms of so sine ex, and which is here, and then cosine ex enters here, and then we need to put a negative sign in the front. 
now we can collect the terms in this table and write out. So um, the integral here of the product of these two terms equal um, collecting the right hand side and uh, there's a negative cosine term, there's the positive sine term and then finally we pick up the product of these two functions and integrate. Okay, the negative sign we move out. And then we see we can move this to the left hand side and get a 2 and divided by 2 we'll get this function which is this right hand side here and we see that it's the same result as uh, using the first method. Okay, so um, yeah, so once you get fluent with this tabular method, it um, is not that complicated to work it out. But uh, there is some um, annoying um, signs, alternating, alternating signs when you put on these terms, and then alternating signs when you collect the the product into the into the solution here. So one has to be careful with those signs. Okay. So um, that's all I want to talk about on this tabular method and uh, next time we will use this to carry out um, in examples of computing Fourier coefficients for functions that we are interested in. Okay, so um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.